Hello and welcome. I'm Arnand Naidu filling in for Riz Khan. He was, quote, the accidental president who came to office after successfully implementing a series of risky financial reforms. His Plano Real, or Real Plan, saved Brazil from skyrocketing inflation and put that country on the path to economic prosperity. But even with these advances, Brazil still has one of the largest wage gaps in the world today. On today's show, we talk to the former president of Brazil and get his assessment on the challenges facing that country, Latin America, and what he really thinks of President Lula da Silva. Don't forget, we take your emails and texts on the show. The contacts are there at the bottom of your screen. Joining us now from Sao Paulo is former Brazilian President Fernando Henrique Cardoso. He's just released his memoir entitled The Accidental President of Brazil. I want to start off with a quotation from your book, your book, The Accidental President of Brazil. Now, in that book, you talk about the current president, yeah. President Lula, and I want to read the quotation. This is from a, a section which is towards the end of the book. It says, I would never have imagined what a disappointment Lula would be as president. His term in office was marked by administrative incompetence and by allegations of serious corruption among his inner circle. You certainly make your feelings known there. So do you feel that Brazil is now in a worse place than it was when you left office? Well, I think that Brazil is a, uh, taking almost a month of progress uh, if you consider our past and what we are now. So we, have, we deserve to have a, a much more fundamental role at the world level. And the fact that some accusations occurred in Brazil vis-a-vis -vis the administration does not compromise. It does not mean that Brazil as a whole is uh, undermined and even that President Lula cannot leader, uh, be the leader of Brazil at that point in time. He was elected, he's our president, and what he's asking for is uh, everything that Brazilians want to be, that is to say, to be more uh, considerate across the world. We, we deserve that, I guess. You know, the Economist magazine recently did a survey on Brazil, and here is what the Economist said of the country. It said, Brazil is big, democratic, stable, and rich. So why is it not doing better? Well, Brazil is uh, democratic stable, it's true. In the last, uh, I don't know, 15 years, democracy is al already there. Uh, it's rich. What is the meaning of being rich? We have natural resources, we have now uh, some import important uh, business people, enterprise. But you cannot say that the, Brazil the Brazilian society is a, a society composed by rich people. And we, we have to do a lot of effort to offer a better uh, life, life standard for Brazilians. So Brazil is a, if you, if you consider across the globe, is a intermediate, in an intermediate stage in terms of, of wealth. Uh, well, and Brazil is doing what can be done. I, I'm, I, I agree with economists in one point. We have to, to be much more active in promoting domestic reforms and to, to transform our government, our management, in a more effective management to cope with challenges coming from the globalization, as well as to be more effective in implementing good policies. This is correct, but it's not true that Brazil is already a, 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 the Brazilian society of people that cannot be considered as rich people. We have rich people, we have good industry, we have good universities, we are making progress, but there is a long way yet to, to accomplish before being considered as a rich nation. I presume what you were saying there is that the gap between rich and poor is still very, very wide in Brazil. In fact, it has one of the biggest gaps in the world. What do you think needs to be done to close that gap? Well, uh, the, if you look what happened in the last 15 years after the stabilization of the economy, also it's clear that some uh, reduces are occurring. You know, if you look at the, the, the year 2000 report by the World Bank and even more recent reports by IMF, we will see that there is an, a, a, a coefficient named Gini coefficients which measures the gap between rich and, and poor. And this is diminishing in Brazil. The point is the pace. We Brazilians would like to have more quickly a more equalitarian society. But we are making some progress. The main thing is how to promote education and to get more uh, growth. You know, in the last years, the, as an average, uh, the Brazilian GDP was going up at a level of, of uh, around 25 to 3 percent. That's not enough. We have to, to at least to reach 5 percent. And to have that, we have also to improve our domestic savings and the capacity from government 
to, to be more active in infrastructure. It's not enough to, uh, to ask for foreign capital to, to help. This is not necessarily the way how the country can you know, develop. We need foreign capital, but we need much more if domestic efficiency, more education, and more saving, to increase the saving rates. Uh, we have a, a, a good leadership in terms of business community in Brazil. And the working force in Brazil is also competent. And our middle class is expanding, but yet we need to do much, much more. Mr. President, I want to turn to the issue of corruption. You've been very critical of President Lula on this particular issue. As, you, as I mentioned in that quotation right at the outset, you said that there was serious yeah. corruption among his inner circle. Do you believe that now President Lula is tackling this problem? Well, I, I hope so. I hope so. Practically, those who have been accused now are dismissed. They are no more minister or no more directly connected to the government. But yet, you know, corruption is not just, you know, uh, one thing localized at the top level of the government. Sometimes it's much more widespread. Now in Brazil, we are uh, facing a difficult situation uh, in the judiciary system because of, of gambling, because of drugs. So we have to continue to, to make more progress in terms of uh, controlling corruption, you see. Uh, we are making progress. It's not just, I, I repeat, it's not just at the political level. It's more generalized than just in political level. I think that President Lula could be much more effective in being more uh, open in criticizing his fellows who have been involved in corruption. He preferred to say, well, I don't know yet, I have to see the, the end result, it depends on the judiciary system, and he never uh, said very clearly to the nation, that's not, that's not correct. So this is the, what I, I criticize him, because he was uh, uh, sober in being more effective in criticizing his friends. But I, 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 I must recognize that now the government is more clean than it was in the past four years. And I hope in the coming years this uh, cleanliness will be a new signal for hope in Brazil. I hope. I'm not sure. You know, Brazil is often referred to as one of the BRIC countries or uh, BRIC countries, the other countries being Russia, India and uh, China. And these are the countries which economists economists believe will dominate the world economy in, yeah. uh, by, by 2050. In fact, that fits in with something you said in your book, actually, when you were talking about your history and legacy. Uh, you said that, I feel my true place in history may only be known 50 years from now. Do you believe that Brazil is on target to meet that challenge by 2050? I think so. If you can compare with what's happening now in other countries, Take China. China may, is making enormous progress, but, uh, but freedom is not that generalized you know, uh, way of, uh, of life in, in China. In Brazil, we have freedom. In Brazil, we have democracy. So it takes more time to introduce some reforms. We have to be much more consistent, basically, in reforming education and some institutions. Our problem is not no more, you, how can I put, the hard, it's the soft, you know, as a side of, of development. We need more respect to the, the rule of law. But if we compare with other countries, you see, like, like, like uh, uh, Russia. Russia is uh, very well now, but because of what? Because of oil, because of gas. Russia is not becoming a more powerful uh, industrial uh, uh, you know, nation. And Brazil has a much more diversified economy. We are strong in, economy, in agriculture. We have good industry, our services are, are, are doing well. So, provided we continue to implement reforms and keep in democracy, I would say it's correct to expect that by the year 2050, Brazil could be one of, of, of the, the biggest economies in the world. But the important thing is not to be a, a big economy. The important thing is to be a good society. That is to say, people being happy living in Brazil, being, you know, uh, with energy, with courage, and being. Uh, plenty of hope, you see. This is, is what is necessary nowadays because the world will be a much more aggressive in the future. I think that we are approaching a moment in time in which it will be necessary to rediscuss a kind of uh, global uh, contract, to respect different differentiation in terms of culture, to re-equilibrate to be re -equilibrate the power system across the world. And I think that Brazil has a say at that level because we are a multiracial society, we have a, we're a multicultural society, we're a peaceful society, we respect our neighbors, we respect people inside the country. We have blacks, we have whites, we have 
Catholics, non-Catholics, uh, including Muslims, we have uh, Jews, and we respect uh, different religions. So I think Brazil could help a lot in transforming the world in a much more peaceful, uh, uh, you know, peaceful and, and, and fruitful, you know, region in, 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 in to, to live in. I think this is very important. We have to avoid future wars. Well, we have wars now. And if you want to avoid future war, we have to start by discussing a new global contract. And Brazil can play a very, very important role at that level. I want to turn to the issue of the environment uh, for just a moment here. In 1996, you issued a decree. Yeah. It was called Decree uh, 1775. It was very controversial because many believed that it benefited logging companies and it benefited mining companies. Uh, but since then, you have yeah. said, uh, about the environment, you have said no quest is more challenging and comprehensive than the preservation of the environment. It's the global issue par excellence, as you put it. So has your view changed, and do you believe that that particular decree was a mistake? Well, I think this is uh, one of the main challenges. If not the, the main, the biggest cha challenge across the world will be environment. We have experience in dealing with that issue. Since 1992, when we had the Rio conference, you know, the awareness of uh, environmental problems in Brazil is moving up. We have a responsibility, that is, to preserve the Amazon forest. This is an enormous responsibility. You know, when you look figures, why Brazil has now become one of the, the, the main countries in terms of, of gases emissions is because of, of burning of, of, of wood in the forest. This is a disaster. We have to stop that. I think that the looking ahead, uh, as I said before, in terms of a new global uh, contract, I would say there are two or three main questions. One is environment. The other one is uh, how to keep peace. And the third one is to respect uh, human rights. So Brazil has to, 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 to become a real world leader, has to be very concerned with the environment. As you know, now it's fashionable to speak about the environment. But we have to, to require mainly from the, you know, the emerging nations and the already industrialized nations to be more serious in dealing with the environment. Up to today, the USA refused to sign the Kyoto Protocol. As you probably know, the Kyoto Protocol was, was initially proposed by Brazilians and then became a, a, a global uh, contract, a, a, a global agreement. But yet several nations are refusing. And some nations, like the emerging ones, China and Russia, not, not, not that much Russia, but China, India, are refusing to be more responsible. I, I would say that Brazil has to be more responsible if Brazil wants to, to perform a, a real leadership across uh, the world. We know what to do. Everything know, everyone knows what to do. The last report by the United Nations is very clear. It's not that expensive to take care of, 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 of uh, uh, environment. But you cannot agree with what is occurring and nobody is protesting. The fact that you are continuing to, you know, to, uh, to, to, to threaten the world because of, of, of green, greenhouse uh, gases. We have to stop that. It's not a phantasmagory that this will produce a disaster. So if this is true, why not to, to, to uh, again, as we did after the Second World War, to put together different people across the world, different governments, and, and to try to sign you know, a, new, a, new, a new pact, a new agreement, by saying, well, no more uh, cutting woods, no more the emission of, of, of greenhouse uh, gas, transforming the utilization of oil. It's imp oil will be uh, always very important. But why not to add ethanol to the, 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 you know, the energetic metrics? Why not to, 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 to try to be much more efficient in using our higher ed ed electricity? So we have lots of, of uh, issues and problems uh, to, to to present, to rise, and Brazil can have a, a, a leadership in that area. And I want to move to foreign affairs. Uh, President Lula recently uh, moved to forge a closer relationship with the United States. Is that something that you support? Yeah. Well, the, 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 the President Lula now has a, a, a good relationship with the United States. Well, the point is, well, it, w w with respect to other countries, we have interests, you see. So uh, it depends on uh, uh, each issue. For instance, in the case of ethanol, now we are clashing with the United States because the United States has very high tariffs to, uh, to import ethanol. Uh, that in that particular issue, Brazil is against. If you look, uh, I said to you, environment, I think that the, the American government has to be much more open 
so it depends on uh, every each topic. We cannot say we, 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 we Brazil never will be totally aligned. Brazil has to discuss item by item what is our interest and what are the uh, humans' interests. I mean, humanity uh, interests. In, in that sense, we have to judge different countries. We have no reason to aggress the United States. As far as the United States are not aggressing us, but we, ha we have no reason either to support every step done by the United States. Brazil has been always very cautious uh, with respect to Iraq war. We never, so the Brazilian government never supported the Iraq war. Brazilian people is not supporting the Iraq war. So in that issue, we are against the American government. But it's not to say that we are um, uh, against the American people. Because, you know, uh, at least half of the American people are not also supporting the Iraq war. So in that matter, Brazil has to be much flexible and very, uh, and very forceful in defending the, 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 the main values we have in our culture. Mr. President, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. On tomorrow's program, we'll talk to an Egyptian sexologist, Hiba Kutub. It's a conversation you won't want to miss. Don't forget, if you have any thoughts about pressing issues around the world, send your emails to riz at aljazeera.net. See you next time. Street Talk is next.